Good evening and welcome to the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission meeting for Monday, January 24th, 2022. Time is now 7.04. First item on the agenda, orders to be signed. Um, Art, you have advanced the column on that, right? I'm sorry. Orders, orders to, be to be signed is the first order of business. We have some. Sure. Uh, there's three. There's five sets there, but only three have been approved. Okay. Okay. And meeting minutes? We have January 3rd, if nothing else. Do we want to look at those? I didn't review them. I didn't look at them either. Okay. They exist. Just get them. So, all right. So let's save that for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Old business, 7 p.m. Public hearing continued. Request withdrawal of notice of intent application. Oh, do we want to do... There's a couple of things, Tracy, real quick. I a couple? Some, one under mail. It should have some from the Tennessee Gas Company. This came in after oh. it was posted. Yeah. They're, they're going to be doing some maintenance. It's the mowing. All right, so we have a notice in our packet from Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company, LLC, providing notification of Tennessee's intent to perform mechanical vegetation maintenance activities on its existing pipeline in the town of Douglas. Work is expected to take place February, March 2022. So if anybody sees any activity on the pipeline, they have notified the commission of the activity. I'm sure in jurisdictional areas. And, and then everyone else should have in their packets probably right after that a letter, an email from um, Michelle, um, senior project manager, uh, regarding the town of Douglas Water and Sewer has a pending notice of intent. And I asked them to come in. They, they, they wanted some clarification on some uh, filing procedurally, how to file procedurally. And so I, I requested they come in just for a couple of minutes just to kind of go over the project and they just needed something to clarify with the bylaw um, so they can file for the next meeting. Okay, so are you, did you provide the clarification to us as far as, um, so well, they would they're be here, filing? They're here, they're here to ask for, for clarification. Oh, I don't see them, but um, before I take it to the Zoom, um, so they're stating it's exempt under Wetlands Protection Act. Yes. So are they filing just locally? Uh, that's the question. I guess. I'm well, thinking. it's it's really difficult to decide whether or not a person needs to file if we don't actually have a plan of the activity within well, they to come, yeah, right. the roadway, the infrastructure within. <laughs> well, I guess they had. Are they here? Are they here right now? Uh, Hi, Steve. Um, we have two representatives from Stantec here. Um, name and address, please, for the record. Sure. Good, good evening. My name is Michelle Simino, Senior Project Manager and Wetland Scientist. I am based out of the Quincy, Massachusetts office of Stantec. And my colleague is here as well. I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, this is Felicia Deuce of Burlington office, Stantec. Uh, I was designing the water and sewer for Town of Douglas. Thank you. So as far as what are your what you're requesting from the board, what is it? Sure, thank you very much for um, entertaining us for a few minutes tonight. I had just reached out to Steve late last week just to ask for some clarification. Um, may we have the opportunity to share our screen and show you a map of the um, sewer and water line? Yes, you're all set. All right, great. Thank you so much. Let's see. Um, it says the host has disabled uh, screen sharing. Should be okay. Right now. Right now. I hear clicking. Fine. Okay. Cable, can you um, can you give Michelle permission? Um, it should be. You should be good. Let me try. Okay, let me try again. Yeah. Try now. <laughs> Negative. All right. There you go. Okay. 
Can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> see a plan. Okay, um, Fereshta is going to give an overview of the project, if you don't mind, very quick mm -hmm. overview, and can just make it really short and sweet as to what our questions are. Okay. Um, I also want to preface this by saying um, there is no question we will be filing a notice of intent for this project under the Wetlands Protection Act, as well as the bylaw. There's some portions of the project that are exempt, um, but there's a little bit of a nuance with the juxtaposition juxtaposition between the Wetlands okay. Protection Act and your bylaw. And we're just looking for some clarification on some jurisdictional questions so that we just know how to approach our filing. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, this is Farishta. As you see the overall project, and this is the map that blue line shows the removal and replacement of old existing water main in Gilboa Street, North Street, and Northeast Main Street. And there are about a total of 9,300 linear feet of water main replacement. And the green line is the force main in Gilboa Street. The red box is the pump station. So there is an old small pump station that we're gonna replace with pre-packaged concrete pump station. It's about seven feet by 11 feet pre-assembled and we're just gonna remove the old one and put the new pump station in that area. And the green line is the force main, six inches in Gilboa Street and going north to town of Oxbridge, it's about uh, four inch force main. So the whole project is water and sewer, uh, remove and replace water main, new force main, and a pump station. Go ahead, Michelle, if you have any question or something. Sure. So um, it, it, are there any questions, uh, clarification on kind of what we're doing or the gist of the project, just before I dive into more specifics of our questions? On Gilboa, what is the existing size of the main? And are you planning to upgrade it? Yeah, the existing force main is four inches, and we're going to replace it with six inch force main, and then going to north is going to be new four inch force main. And the water mains are from six inches to eight inches that we're going to replace with 12 inches water main in Gilboa, and 16 inches water main in Main Street. 16 inch? And north 12 inches mm -hmm. in North Main Street mm -hmm. and 16 inches in North Street. And Main Street. Main and North are getting um, 16 uh, inch? No, North is Main Street 12, Gilboa 12. The only section is going to be North Street. That's going to be. Yeah, Michelle, can you just show the North Street? That's going to be 16 inches. A lot of it's called out. Coming down. Yes, yeah, that's section. Yeah, that that's section 16 is 16. But the rest of the blue the lines are 12 inches. Streets. It cuts off. So I'm trying to find the other map. OK, so the scope of work is what? One more time. Nothing to do with Main Street? It's that section of oh, Main Street. Okay. It's from, yeah, you ready? OK. It's from here down to Goboa, oh, right up to the bridge. It's they keep on muting. Okay, thank you. I muted them, I don't think you realized. Okay. Everyone please mute unless you're presenting for this agenda item. Okay, so what is the clarification that you're looking for from the board? Sure, absolutely. So as I mentioned, we'd be filing a notice of intent. Um, the majority of this work, say about 90% of it, is in the um, existing um, pavement, the paved roadway. Mm -hmm. So under 10.02, mm -hmm. um, we th that those portions of the project are exempt. However, we are filing the notice of intent for the pump station work and then some work on um, Northeast Main Street. Our clarification um, that we just would love to take your pulse and, and get your um, reading on it and some guidance is um, under your bylaw, there aren't any ex specific exemptions for public utility work. 
And I was just wondering if, it's, um, if you have a policy on that or kind of what your habit is when it comes to exemptions under the Wetlands Protection Act, if they carry through to the bylaw. And then the second part of my question is kind of building on that is that under the bylaw, there's a jurisdictional area of 100 feet um, of, a, of a buffer zone from the bordering land subject to flooding. And where this is important to the project is that it kind of makes a difference if, if 100 feet from bordering land subject to flooding is jurisdictional. It just kind of helps us in, um, design how we're going to present the project to you in terms of numbers of sheets and how we present it and what we show. It also has a bearing on the butter notification process and how many butters are pulled in. So we just just are looking for some clarification on kind of how we would want to see this project presented if um, your if there are no exemptions under the bylaw and you want to see all the work within a hundred feet of all the regular buffer zones under the Wetlands Protection Act as well as the hundred foot buffer zone from the BLSF. Um, we're just looking for guidance on what you would like to see just so we can kind of get it right the first time, if you will. Okay, so your first question about the exemptions. So Steve can speak to the historical data of the national grid pole replacement with best management practices um, being used. Um, so Steve, do you want to go through what the board has allowed, I believe, just under that um, section of Wetlands Protection Act to allow for um, utilities and infrastructure? Yeah, typically the commission over the years um, is pretty much tried to think in the bylaw, I think, tried to do this when it was adopted in the early 80s, is a mirror of the Wetlands Protection Act to some extent. So those exemptions under the, under the act pretty much mirrored over in a large extent to what was uh, under the bylaw. So they typically, we didn't get separate filings. We got dual filings, but very rarely. Once in a while we get a separate filing because of certain aspects of the bylaw. Um, isolated land subject to flooding and whatnot, which is not covered in, in, in the, um, the act. But sometimes a lot of the exemptions, and it's a big exemption, a lot of the work is right in, in the middle of the roadway. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, they're, they're, they, they, and a lot of this has to do with emergencies and repairs and whatnot. So, um, there'll be, I think Michelle talked about a lot of the work is, you know, they open the road up, they cover it up, they do the work, and then, and I'm sure they are filing, and, and they have some lateral work they're, they'll be filing to, through, so all the laterals that are coming off the mains aren't exempt, but um, this is what you anticipated. But I think in general, historically, the commission kind of went with the WPA. Mm -hmm. And just tonight, we've received a notice of maintenance activities. So as far as repair maintenance in that right. section of Wetlands Protection Act. So we have received in the past notices from National Grid stating that they're replacing poles that may be in our jurisdictional area, that are necessities for infrastructure and um, public safety. So my opinion is that the majority of the work, if it's within the right of way, if it's within and it's not expanding on the existing conditions, that it is exempt and exempt activity. That's my opinion. Um, that's what we we're just receiving a notice right now for maintenance, and maintenance is one of the listed things um, as far as you're replacing a line. That's maintenance. Um, okay. I don't know if we want to. Oh, I apologize. No, that's okay. I don't know if we want to get the pulse of the board, but um, as far as the understanding that I've had, um, especially for infrastructure improvements, not just brand new, um, I would, I would um, assume that they would be exempt. And you're already filing an NOI, so there will be a permittable um, item. the The scope of work is permittable, so. Exactly. And just to let you know, all the all the wetland resources er, wetland resource areas have been identified, flagged, surveyed. Yeah, we'll so. have the UK's, you know, erosion and sanitation controls. We're doing everything by the book. It's just yeah. this clarification on how we approach the write up, and you know, we need to speak to specific performance standards. And also, I think what's um, kind of weighing on my mind is the butter notification, and just you know, we don't want to um, notify 
too few of others, certainly. And um, we also, it's a linear project over a thousand feet. So that under the Wetlands Protection Act requires a butter notification of a thousand, a thousand foot radius. Um, outside the limit of work, so obviously that pulls yeah. in uh, a you know number of additional folks. So again, we just we're just looking to um, get the right get the right stride for you. Okay, so you're so my opinion, which we can get Steve and the board, um, is the work that is exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act would still be exempt. If you're expanding on the footprint or disturbing additional area, you would have to notify of the expansion of the disturbance. I hope that helps you for the notification part. Because you are, okay. And then the second question is um, bordering land subject to flooding, where do we, so are you, within 100 feet of bordering land subject to flooding that you are expanding on the existing disturbed area? Let's see. Um, not expanding. I, I think for us to correct me if I'm wrong, there might be a couple of um, fire, new fire hydrants and tie-ins that we're going to do, like little little spurts off the main um, on North Main Street, or sorry, Northeast Main Street. Um, that would be kind of just barely going outside the um, existing footprint of the roadway. Freshta, is that coming out with that if you don't mind? Yeah, there are going to be some fire hydrants that's not in the pavement. Safety. It's yeah, not off the road. Safety. And also the pump station uh, is within the 100 year flood elevation. But that's the existing pump station, and the new pump station, we're going to put the electrical cabinet and control panel and pump station access hatch would be above 100-year flood okay. elevation. But the existing one, it's not. So we're going to improve the pump station with removing the old one and put a pre new yeah, precast yeah, one lift yeah, station I just know if with the electrical water. control right. on okay. a concrete yeah. pad yeah. above the 100 year flood elevation. That's great. So as far as, I mean, we can, we're filing an NOI for the activity, but as far as notification, are you claiming that that pump station falls under the exemption or are you claiming that I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Nope, that's okay. Are you claiming that that pump station? So it seems like it's the pump station, is maybe the gray area. Are you claiming that it will not disturb or increase the disturbance or of not. what is existing, or will you do you believe that you will be going beyond the existing disturbed area? It'll be going beyond the existing disturbed area. That's the primary reason for our notice of intent filing. And that's kind of part of what we were trying to um, see what we needed to focus on for your purposes and the bylaw and just um, differentiate. But yeah, that's the main reason we're, we're filing the, um, the notice of intent. Okay. It's the pumps. It is, as first just said, it is in the 100-year um, uh, AE zone, um, but we're raising it up, getting it out of the zone, so there'll be no fill, but we're not claiming an exemption on that area at all. Um, okay. Okay. So that's good. So you're going to have to notify everyone around there. And then um, what is your specific question under the bylaw as there's both the FEMA A zones and AE zones within the, foot, the project footprint? Correct. So it, it, since under the Wetlands Protection Act, um, the, the BLSF doesn't have a 100-foot buffer zone, but it does under the bylaw. Um, I, I think you maybe just explain to me or answer that question that um, you, you may look at it as exempt under the bylaw. So this may be a moot point, but I guess I just wanted to um, understand for sure if that's something. Do you want to see the hundred feet um, from the LSF on plans and things like that? Yes, and I thought it was just isolated land subject to flooding for our local bylaw. I didn't think it was BSLF. 
the way I read it, I think it said isolated or bordering. Um, I think that was um, definitely, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I thought that's the way I read it. That was my interpretation um, upon reading it. But if that is not the case, um, Steve. Then, then we I think you prepare the NOI with that area being a sensitive area and notifying all the butters. If there's no expansion mm -hmm. or additional disturbance, you do your ma best management practices for the rest of the roadway. Okay. Okay. And we'll still present an overall plan that has, gives you a key sheet so you can see how the, how the project is connected, but then just focus on the areas that trigger the filing. Just yeah. Just that okay yes thank you very yeah, much yes i think that's a good plan we want you to get everything rolling as soon as possible so i think that would be a okay, okay. thank you very much for you're your welcome time. thank you no, we'll see you on the next meeting uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just yeah, a joke it was like a con con joke oh, okay. <laughs> yeah it was a joke we missed the deadline <laughs> right Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I think you're all set with the within the existing paved roadway. I think you're good with that. And then um, we'd want to see BMPs. Um, Steve has, we've see, all seen actually like the national grid new poles with um, BMPs in place, the straw waddles. Um, so we're looking for that, that type of um, thing, steak straw waddles. Our Absolutely. compost sock. That whole detail sheet, we'll show yeah. where the tissue girls are going, um, details, all, all the whole nine yards. It's just a matter of what do we show and how. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, again, thank you so much for your guidance. We truly appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay, Steve, you want to so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Steve, do you want to say anything about that? I would just say make sure that um, Central Regional Office for DEP gets your electronic copy so you can have a DEP number as soon as you can. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah as soon as the, the, the critical path, depending on what meeting you plan on going on, February 7th or the March 7th. March 7th oh. shouldn't be a problem, but the, mm -hmm. it's going to be the place for the legal lab. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, make sure that's in. Those are the two things you really need. <laughs> make sure that's in. Understood. Definitely. Yep, we'll get it to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Members, do you have any comments? No. No, I just think they're going to do a filing. We're still going to yeah, see the wetlands. We're still going to see everything on this map. So. Could you mute that person, please, that's walking? The one that's one around town. Okay, maybe kick them out. Could just get them off the thing because they'll come back on if you need to. Oh. There you go. Do they leave? They left. They're not um, here now. Are we ready? 728 public hearing continued requested withdrawal of the notice of intent application 39 West Street was 62 Manchog Street entrance move to 39 West Street St. Dennis Church so we have a request in our packet to withdraw their notice of intent application I'll entertain a motion for 39 West Street withdrawal Hell no, they should keep it after all this time we spent. Yeah, it's been a year and a half, not long enough yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We started out at St. Dennis like Church. It's so fast. Uh, yeah, I moved it to allow for the withdrawal. Okay, motion made by Art, second, second. by Mike G. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. aye. Art Mottmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Mark Mungemai. KG Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda, public hearing, continued notice of intent, 148 Shore Road. Did you open that? Probably. Steve, was this open? No, something I would do. 148? This was open. Yeah, this, this is old. Open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what do you mean by open? Like Did open. I open it when I like read the notices and things? Yeah, I did this one. 
Okay. Yeah, this is uh, for a couple so minutes. I'll pass it to Katie Grace. I oh. guess I'll recuse myself. Thank you so much. What are we trying to do? 148 Shore Road. Yeah, no, I, we, this is the one we asked for some updates to this plan. And yes. is that what we're reviewing now? Yes. Okay. Uh, some, some things with the stormwater, the driveway. Yeah, this was one of Margaret's, right? Run, run off yes. from the roof. Okay. Do you have a copy of the plan in your file? I, I'm looking at it. Yeah, I don't know if it's the updated one, but I ha I have the one on the OneDrive. OneDrive, and, and everyone should have the same thing in their folder. Oh, okay, great, even better. Excellent. Yeah, uh, Margaret, introduce yourself, and then and then go ahead. And then there's a bigger copy if you want it next to Mike on the table. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw it. All right. So, for the record, Margaret Bacon, Civil Site Engineering. And uh, I'm here requesting a permit for uh, 148 Shore Road. Um, at the last meeting in December, the, uh, the board asked uh, for a couple of minor revisions. One was uh, moving the stormwater basin closer to the driveway, uh, grading the driveway so that the, uh, the drainage from the driveway uh, gets funneled more towards that stormwater basin and preserving uh, some more trees by moving the basin and uh, on the right hand side of the driveway. If you let me share a screen, I can show you those real quick. Yeah. Should be good now. on this end. Uh, can you still hear me okay? I can. Yep. Uh, Can't share. You want me to bring it up, Margaret? Sure. Thanks. Steve can do the heavy lift thing. Sure. Hmm. Right, I have my opinion about rain gardens. Well, I do have an opinion. That's okay. You refused. <laughs> Oh, stay out of the rain garden. Stay out of the rain garden. You can have a picture. <laughs> What's the groundwater? Uh, from this, there's one other plan. Oh, with the groundwater. Yeah, high groundwater. Well, yeah, yeah, this is the grass one like I have on the regular kind. Yeah. Oh, Jerry, on. Yeah, I, I did submit another plan in December that shows. Uh, the, uh, the stormwater basin moved over towards the driveway. Yep. We have the copies of that? What's Please. the date on mine? How far is... I have the one that's shown on the screen. Yeah, it should be... Yeah, if you look over in the revision, revision number two with the date of 1216. Right. No, this one I've got is... Oh, revision date is 12-4. Yeah. No, did I print the wrong one? Hang on. Yeah, you printed September 17th. Well, no, it's 12-4 on the 12 revision. 12 4. Yeah, but, so. yep, that's what I have. This was December 6th. Okay. It won't be successful. I don't think we have the right It's under the ground water. Because <laughs> then it will be a pond. I can, I can try sharing my screen again. Yeah, go ahead. I ain't tight. I don't even see it on here. It can be above. No, it can't be above. No. It moves around. It's the wrong one. Oops. Yeah, it's further down. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got the paper copy. I don't know if I got the email. Can, Cable, can you let Margaret Bacon have? Sure. She 
does have share screen. She does have share screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a problem on. Uh, this is the plan that's over. It's coming it's up. It's starting. Okay. Hold on. Mark, Mark, did you look at the plan I have on the table? Mark, Mark, Brook and Worcester, that's fine. To the right. Is it 1216 on that? It's two of them. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. All right, Margaret. Yeah, your plan is showing on the screen now. Okay. Um, so just a, a couple of uh, minor changes from that the plan that stated 12-4. Mm -hmm. At the last meeting, you mentioned about moving this, this little basin closer to the driveway. Yes. Into these trees in this area. So I have a note here to preserve these trees. Uh, I have the, the driveway graded so that it'll flow into this basin before discharging out. Uh, I have another note over here on this side of the driveway. You know, this is outside the buffer zone is to preserve as many trees as we can between the driveway and the property line. And then also to add a conservation seed mix gotcha. uh, along this area also. Uh, so based on the meeting we had in December, uh, you know, the three things were the trees, preserving trees, uh, driveway uh, drainage, and moving the, uh, the stormwater basin. And so that this plan includes all those with the revised date of 1216. Are these property plants going to survive with like a 12, 12 to 18 inch piece of brown water? This one's You said fine. that's a 12 16 plant? This one's fine, but. Uh, you're worried about. Yeah, so over uh, right. This one. My uh, livelihood. In this okay. one. So. In this one. Our right plan is 12 This one's four. just a vegetable. This one's not right. fine. It's not going to survive. I don't have the update. Then why do we why do a base that is not gonna live? I, I dropped them off uh, back it's in December. Gonna it's close enough to the how is that so one? Is the road run off or I dropped them off again, but no, this this is a plan. Oh, see how so that it doesn't bad. end up in Shore Road. We're trying to not end uh, up in Shore Road. Yeah, so you do a stone swing. Got enough problems on Shore Road. Yeah, the cover letter is dated Capture December sixth. And filter. No, I have another cover letter. I'm, uh, kind of, I'm concerned about the the white of these plans. Okay, I hear you. Which ring I dropped off. Maybe, maybe you didn't get it, Steve, but I did drop it off on the, the 16th. This is a strange plant selection. Discussed. Here's that basin closer to the driveway. Pitch well, in the driveway the be fine. so that it flows into this basin. And then preserving trees on this side, and preserving trees over here by moving that basin. So that it doesn't There's still a lot of grading on the right side of the driveway as you go up the driveway. I There's a to bring a little not because not with, with the driveway, there, there is some grading on both sides. That's correct. Yeah. It's going to be a big bowl of a budget plant. At least it's going to plant. So where were the trees yeah, that preserved at least they're with, with the grading that's happening? Hmm. Say that again? Where would the trees be preserved if it's being graded to the property? trees are in between the, the two, whatever trees they can preserve. I mean, I know the uh, the, the, the property the owners want to leave a, try to leave a Everywhere. buffer. Everywhere? Oh, okay. You know, property okay. in, uh, well, uh, the driveway's uh, not in there. Yeah. Her, yeah. No, she did. Island side. Yeah. You got their pun finger for things outside the jurisdiction? For what? So I, Survey every tree out there. This is jurisdictional. 
The vegetative basin was jurisdictional. She moved it here. Okay. And are those trees inside the limit of work, inside the... Um, and the trees are line? here is there that he's that talking about. They're demoing? Right, they're right they're this is part of... Them? Yes, that's part of the grading. We're saying because there's no grading in here that the tree should remain. Is the intent is that it goes that way, yes. It also goes in here. There's a ditch in here. Yeah, here in charge. I understand. The ditch is not going into the ditch is not going into the baby gate either. Yes, I understand that. And you are allocating an area of, of activity outside the 100 to go into the 100. Because otherwise it's going to wash into the street and into the other resource area. I also mm -hmm. care about the pond. Mm -hmm. I have <laughs> to Sorry, I was going to ask about um, the species selection for the two rain gardens off the gutters. They seem like they're wetland species and what what is how high is the groundwater there? Is that gonna be sufficient to keep the wetland species alive? Um, the rain gardens well typically uh uh let me see what I have up in there. Like, I can see the azalea being okay, but I'm not sure about the blueberries. I don't, I don't have a good sense for how high that is above the water level. Uh, the groundwater there, I, I believe, is about four, actually it's three feet. So that, that basin, I think I graded it down about a, a foot. Mm -hmm. so, so typically, you know, I, I you know, any one of these plants uh, would, would suffice. High bush blueberry, that they'll grow in wet or, or dry conditions. If anything, the pink azalea likes her feet a little wetter than, than the other plants. Okay. But the the A lilies all really do quite well in these. Okay. I mean, I see that you've given yourself enough wiggle room in terms of your plant selection. I just wanted to call that out. Um, and the same with the vegetated basin. I appreciate you moving that closer to the driveway. What's the maintenance plan for that? You know, actually it works a little better over there. No, no that, was a, that was a good view. Okay. I do have in the pocket the 1216 revised plans with a cover letter. Oh, okay. So that was in the to be signed folder. Oh. So if anybody wants, do you want to look at this? What? Yes, Steve, you're okay. Mark, do you want to look at this? This is the more updated one. Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. I don't know. It was in the to be signed. They I do look how. similar. So, and then the follow-up question was, with the vegetated basin, is there a maintenance plan associated with that? Uh, I didn't create one. It's really, and it, it, what I tell the homeowners is to be quite attractive. That, you know, you, you maintain them. And yeah. Now, it's when you stop maintaining them and you just let the uh, the vegetation, uh, you know, run wild. It's you know, it's just a nice little landscaping uh, area. Yeah. No. Absolutely. How is the water getting there from the driveway? Any yeah, that's right, I don't have better. the same grading oh. on this one. Right, from here and here. <laughs> the basin, basin better do the job because it's close to the road. <laughs> and we got so much problems with Shore Road already. Right. 
see. Well, I mean, that's the concern. We have the vegetated basin. Is that going to do what we need it to do in terms of catching water from there? Yep. Is that the is the directionality on is on the side of the driveway sufficient to guide that water towards the vegetated basin? Well, what I, I have here right there, the, this right here is a little low point. So anything coming down that driveway is going to hit this little low point and then head off into there. Okay. All the water needs to stay on that person property. And then it, then it just gets slightly higher over here as it goes up over the culvert. Yep. Can you provide us with the uh, number of plants that are going to be installed? Oh, no, I didn't provide the number of plants. You were giving me a hard time about the water going here. Now you're upset that the water's going here. The rule is everybody keeps their water on their own lawn. Mm -hmm. So that's the point grade at the entrance of this lawn. Anyone else want to look at this? We have another copy. Yeah, this is the old copy. This is the new one. No, I'm just looking at the elevation of the road versus the driveway. Um, is there, you said there's a little dip at the bottom there. How much does it come up before it gets to Shore Road? Yeah, we is have, that about 594 at the end of Shore Road? or? We have the kind of rains we had this past summer. And with the problems we got on Shore Road already, I hope that basin is going to be able to handle the volume of water. Well, and that's... That's, that's going to be directed towards it. That's the note that we're making is that if you look at the elevation in the middle of the yard, you know, the, the driveway goes from 597 down to 96 down to 95 into the vegetated basin, but it also goes down to 595 into Shore Road. Mm -hmm. There's a ditch there too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and the, the elevate, like the ditch isn't substantial enough to have an elevation marker, but like it's, it's, Right at the end of the driveway, it appears that that's associated with the 595 marker is the little dip that Margaret's talking about. And then the mark right after that is four. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. It does appear that between the little dip we were talking about and the road itself, it, it continues to go down. It doesn't look like, from this, this display, it doesn't look like it's coming back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is some of those top there is there is a ditch there that runs right along here and I guess a there, bit, yeah. Doesn't really accurately represent what's what's there. Mm -hmm. But there is a a ditch there and I I've mimicked the uh the uh, the bottom of that culvert is gonna be uh the same elevation as that ditch. And then it's an eight no I have a, a culvert and then about a foot on top of that, so I'm going to be at the uh, menu for uh, 96, 9650, 97 over the culvert. Hmm. I mean, 9650. Mm. 96, no. 90, that's what's, yeah. What about in the uh, detail? But pretty much all the water needs to stay on that site. Yep. And then we can condition it as. How'd you come up with the elevation for the no, bottom of seven. the um, vegetated basin? It says 594. Is that a flat bottom, or does it go down more than that? It's a it's a, it's a flat bottom. It, it, you know, some of it is based off of uh, I did some drainage 
Uh, and I did provide the drainage gouts with this. Uh, so I needed to make it large enough and deep enough to accommodate, you know, for the smaller storm events, that, that driveway. You know, the big 100-year storm event, it's not going to handle that, you, you know, it'd be way too big. But for the smaller storm events, that's big enough to, to handle the driveway runoff. The, um, how old is that 595.75? It looks like the driveway is at 595.75 at its low point. Is that a problem? Say that. The outlet for the vegetated basin is elevation is called out as elevation 595.75. And the dip in the driveway is below 596. So I gotta assume that might be at 595.75 as well. Is that going to be a problem? Um uh, It shouldn't be. I just I want to make sure make sure because you have the you do have a detail of the ditch, which is helpful because we're going from the shore drive is unpaved and this driveway is paved. Correct. Right. So you have a detail. I just saw it. You have a detail showing the paved surface going to the unpaved surface, and the way it's shown in the detail. Um, it does. It shows that the paved section is going to be marginally below the unpaved section, which makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sense mm -hmm. sure that that's that that's what's going to happen. Because I'm looking at I'm looking at this. Because that, the, what's in the detailed drawing is absolutely what we want to see happen. We just want to make sure that that's what's going to happen. Yeah, when you're talking about the detail, you're talking about the plan. The little tiny box in the middle left. Up, there's a, right underneath the rain garden detail, there's a trench detail. Drainage trench section. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I like that, and I agree that that's what we should be doing, and I just want to make sure that that's what ends up happening. Where the where the paved is slightly below the unpaved surface. Correct. Yep. Correct. I have it. It's zoomed in a lot. The, the oh, yeah, typical yeah, drainage. I have it electronically. You're talking about the typical drainage section. Correct. Not to scale, it's generic. But I like the thing that is happening in right. it. Right, and then we've got proposed 12-inch um, HD PP culvert. Right. Culvert is at 593.8. Right, and the one in the picture is like in is is not that size. And we're at about 594 at the at the road. So right. We got 0.2 inch, 0.2 feet. Right. And that's not the thing that we want. Agreed. We want it to be. All the water needs to stay on the site. That should be conditioned that all the water stays on their property. Every drip of water so, so drops on the. Yeah. Property. So it, uh, the, the driveway here. It, this is a 595. Okay. So so the the, the existing driveway is going to blend into the uh, the gravel road. But at, coming down this driveway, here is the low point right here. So everything coming down here is going to hit this low point. Okay. Head there. So there, there's very little from here that's going to go out on the shore road. Okay. Where's that? Steve, do you have any pictures of this road? I mean, you the can push it. Where it comes off the shore road? Sorry, let, let me check. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I do not. Thanks. Okay. Has there been 
the sidewalk conducted here? Nope. I don't know if we want to have um, also off this the is record, still a public hearing art to come in to look at it. I don't know. Okay, so so there's a few things that we can do here. We have some issues with the elevation. Um, we haven't seen the site. This is an uh, this is a public hearing, and I'm wondering if anybody, well, unless you had anything else, Margaret, I was going to open it up to the public to see if anybody wanted to speak on this property. Uh, no. Oh, the committee. Yeah. I'm all set. Okay. Or the you guys can talk. Well, the, the concerns I have is that knowing the issues we've had on Shore Road mm -hmm. already is that those the stormwater and all the runoff from this property stays on this property. I think that that has to be, um, Margaret, we've got to come up with a way to make sure that happens. Um, right. And, uh, just exacerbating the problem on Shore Road, um, it, it's terrible as it is with the, with those folks fighting with each other. We don't need to throw more fuel on the fire. I, I hear you, but the, you know there's there's runoff that comes off of this site now. So I, I tried to accommodate uh, a lot of this runoff uh, from the roofs to the rain to these rain gardens that that was brought up at, at one of the meetings. Mm -hmm. Last then, meeting. Got a little basin down here that accommodates the uh, the driveway. So I do have some drainage calcs that I, I, I prepared and submitted uh, up to the uh, the five-inch storm event that pretty much uh, shows that what I what we've done on this site uh, pretty much doesn't change pre and post conditions. We're going to have a paved driveway now, though. Mm-hmm. Correct. So that, that's going to change the conditions that we have now. Right. This is currently a forest, and it's being replaced in part by a house, a garage, and a driveway. So, like, understood that there will always be some water, but we have to offset for the fact that a whole bunch of trees are now replaced by non-permeable surfaces. I... Yeah, and, and then also, too, uh, all the water in, in, from this area, there's a 12-inch culvert right here. Yeah. And I've down there during the big rain events and this culvert ha has no problem accommodating any of the runoff in this area uh so so everything uh on this lot uh and then the, the, the adjacent lot flows here this way into this culvert and it flows this way through this ditch into this culvert and then through and then through this culvert down into wall of lake in this culvert, I've been down there several times after these big rain events, and, and there, there's no problem with this 12 inch culvert. Right, I just, that's not part of the property that we're dealing with. Take. No, I have the, this water this here. This one's is really 12 inch? <laughs> And this one is, I've heard. But we also haven't done a site walk, and we could. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Margaret. All right, if we're good. Yeah. Excuse me, could I, could I make a comment? Name and address. Uh, yes. Uh, Jean Lawrence, who, um, 119 Shaw Road. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the points bring, brought up about there's been a lot of, you know, problems on Shaw Road with drainage. And right in, I don't know if it's exactly in front of that spot, but almost exactly, there was an enormous, um, well, it's a pothole, but it was just like a huge ditch. Like you could hardly bring your car um, through it. Yeah. And I know that the Nadals filled it in, and, um, but they happened to have like someone who could help them do that. But because we're on a private road, we don't have any way to get these things done. So mm -hmm. I do appreciate your attention to this, and I appreciate um, Margaret Bacon's attention to it. And I just wonder, because it must be very hard to know over time whether it's not going to cause a problem, is there a way to ask the, um, the owners, like they have to guarantee that it's not a problem or they have to fix the road? Is there a way to somehow stipulate 
what happens if this doesn't work out? There's not a way to stipulate what they do with the road because it's not part of this property, but we can put in the conditions that we put out, we can condition a maintenance plan for that vegetated basin so that it, it continues to function. Um, and, and we can make sure that we condition it so that, you know, the, the rainwater stay on this property. The jurisdictional areas. Yeah. Outside the jurisdictional areas. No, inside. We can only guess, control you know, what's with the within the is, is a concern. The commission certainly, you know, Margaret did submit some stormwater calcs. It's like, it's, it's like, yep. I think that he had comments on that, about that it was tied to stormwater management somehow. We could certainly send it out for peer review to make sure that I am comfortable with Margaret's design, but so the commission's it's one of those I think with the saga. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. I would also like to do a site walk. I, I agree with that as well. Yeah. Has this been staked, Margaret? Staked it. Okay. Thank you. Do you think you'd be go doing a sidewalk? I know we got a snowstorm coming. No. Yeah, this weekend. Your kids do come into the snowstorms. <laughs> this oh. weekend's eight to twelve. Or something. Oh, give me a break. Um, but Exaggerates. I think it's going to stay uh, by next week. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Do you want the peer review to be paid by the so by the commission or paid mm. by the applicant? Yes. Applicant. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So I'll send that, I'll get a quote from, uh, I'll use the firm that, that I guess was hired by the solar farms. So it's in the yes. Vicinity. It's right down the road. Yeah. They can piggyback on that. Yes. Yeah, if you can send me uh, an estimate so I can talk to my clients first. Mm. Yes. I, do we want to do the site walk after that? After the peer review? It doesn't matter to me. I can go before. Uh, <laughs> it might be one of those things the commission, I, you could, certainly it's right on the road. If you go down here, yeah, I recommend going through Rhode Island. <clears throat> Just because the road is more stable on that end? Coming through, through Rhode Island. Yeah. No, no, I, I concur. And if Margaret, if Margaret could state the, just the center line of the driveway, and, and maybe put a stake where the pipe is so people could see it as they're driving down the shore road. Oh, yeah, that would be very helpful. Yep. Center and line of the driveway, and then... When you're coming from Rhode Island, you hit the beaches on the left. It's right after the beach on the right. You're yeah, I've down. been down that way. No, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. All right, so we want a site walk. We want to do a peer review. She's going to get a quote. Are there any other changes that we want to call out now or call out? We were going to condition. I mean, we're not going to close this now, but we would like to put in the conditions that the, the water stays in the property and that there be a maintenance plan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> no, she, she did address a lot of the things we talked about on December 6th. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the conservation seed mix and the, uh, you know, we talked about the swales and the berms and I, I just, like I said, I, I prefer, I'd be more comfortable after I see a peer review report on <coughs> where this okay. water is going to go. Good. Good, good. Um, um, if, there's, if there isn't anything else from the public at right hand, at this time, I will entertain a motion to continue. To what? Oh, yeah. Um, so we want to look at it. We want to peer review it. March 1st. March 7th? Um, February 7th or March 1st? March 1st is not real. March 1st is March 7th. Oh, or March 7th. So I'll you make a that? motion that we continue to March 7th. Mm. So moved? Second. Second. Seconded by Mike Greco. <clears throat> Roll call vote. Eric Harris, aye. Mark Montmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. 
Mark Mungemai. KG Dudley, I. It gives us six weeks Tracy to get everything done. Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. Thank you, Margaret. We will we'll take a look at the site. So. Okay, now I'll forward it to Steve. Thank you. For the Douglas guest. Can you see it from over there hmm? on the wall? Right there. Yeah. What? It's lowercase Douglas. Yeah. Wow. Uppercase M A. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are numbers. All right, so the next item on here is a notice of intent for 74th Street. Do you want to yeah. take it back? Yeah. I just want the Wi-Fi password. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Wow. I'm just trying to, I can't read the I number. I can't see anything. Oh, one, maybe? Go cool. look. <laughs> <laughs> Um, public hearing notice of intent 74 Main Street Family Convenience Center proposed fuel station and convenience store possible votes Town of Douglas Conservation Commission 29 Depot Street Douglas Mass 01516 legal notice for public hearing Pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 131 Section 40 Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act the Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on January 24th, 2022 at 7 p.m. for the notice of intent filed by Douglas Convenience Center, Inc., located at 74 Main Street, for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work includes involves construction of a new convenience store with automobile filling station and fast food restaurant with a drive through food service window. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Town of Douglas Municipal Center located at 29 Depot Street, Douglas Mass. Are pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, the public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda, posted on the town's website, www.douglasma.gov, at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the notice of intent may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission at 508-476-4000, extension 205. Publication January 12th, 2022. And name and address, whomever would like to start. My name's Ray Whitehead. I live at 17 Beacon Road in Webster, and I own and operate Family Convenience Center 63 Main Street here in Douglas. I have with me Sam Stronsky, our manager, Rob Lucier with CMG Environmental doing our site work, and Scott Jordan from Ecotech is online. He's our wetland specialist. <coughs> um, we are like to build a new gas station convenience store across the street. We have several operational problems, uh, including some 40-year-old steel tanks 70 feet from the stream that nicely feeds our drinking water supply. So we wish to uh, make everything bigger, better, and safer. We have a lot of traffic problems. We have a, just the uh, chaotic entrance and exits into our facility. And so uh, we'd like to move across the street and solve every one of our operational and safety problems. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Rob Lucier, who can explain the things that I think you want to know. Just real quick with the commission. So in your packages, you'll have a copy of the DEP technical comments, a copy of uh, we did tag team the conservation commission with the planning board, like McCartney, the peer review of the project and the stormwater management. And then based on the DEP's uh, comments, the, a link did go out to the commission with the traffic study. And the plan I just put in everyone's package, I think is a copy of the plan for the traffic study. We had, I don't believe we've gotten any responses from the peer review from the applicant's engineers yet. Do 
you want to start with the DEP's comments? Sure. Um, do you want to go over the comments for me to do a quick overview, or is everybody pretty much familiar with the submission? Huh. Um, should do an overview. I'll be very brief. I know you yeah. have a very packed agenda. So um, I'm sure you're familiar with the site, uh, 74 Main Street, which is on the corner of Rydell Road and Main Street. There's a few resource areas that we have to uh, be aware of for the project. We have some wetlands located to the north. A portion of the wetlands are on our site. There's also wetlands located across Main Street, which has the 100 foot buffer zone projected onto our site and the lower, uh, that would be the southwest corner of the site. And then the northern portion of the site is within the 100 foot buffer zone for the uh, wetlands located to the north. So we are proposing towards the center of the site. Oh, also, I'm sorry, there's also a 200 foot riverfront area, which is important okay. to Centerville Brook. That's the most I, important one. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, um, did they mistake in something? For... No, I, I, we are not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's on the record. Okay. Riverfront area. Yeah. So um, we're proposing a 9,600 square foot uh, convenience store located in the center of the site. Um, there'll be a drive-through facility with a bypass lane going around the building. Um, five fuel dispensers with a canopy in the front. Um, lots of parking, a lot more than you have currently. Um, and then we also are proposing above ground storage tanks for the fuel. They won't be underground due to the fact that we're in the watershed protection overlay district. So can't have that. So there'll be a state-of-the-art above-ground storage tanks that these are actually located within the 100-foot wetland buffer zone. Um, the only develop or only portion that's proposed, uh, impervious area, I should say, that's within the 200-foot riverfront zone is the site entrance. Um, there is a portion of one of the stormwater basins that's within this 100-foot buffer zone. Um, regarding stormwater, uh, all the stormwater will be contained and infiltrated on site up to the 100 year storm. We're not proposing any type of um, stormwater flows off site into Main Street, even during the 100 year storm event. Um, also, we're proposing, it's all going to be deep sub hooded catch basins as well as oil grit separators, um, a 3,000 gallon one, a 4,000 gallon one to Basically, if there is a uh, oil spill, that'll contain some oil. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, that's just a brief overview. But be happy to go over some comments, any questions. Um, so, is it 826 square feet of riverfront area being disturbed? Yeah, that is the impervious area. That's really 826 square feet right there? Correct. On your lot? Not in the right of way. Not in the right of way. I can't see from here. Okay. Where's the property line? Property line is right here. That inlet is three lanes wide. Mm. Okay. Doesn't just doesn't appear to be 826 square feet. Are you saying it? Should, you oh, I, I think it. Totally it I, I think it looks smaller from here, from my seat. So, did you address? DEP's concern. Yeah, so what we're planning to do is we're gonna um, we're gonna resubmit everything this Wednesday. We address DEP comments, so I know that there's the alternatives analysis comment, which was basically just stating that they want to see the alternatives analysis to go beyond the boundaries of our site. So more to see if there's other parcels that are better suited um, within the commercial district that have the same size. So we'll have to include that. Within the town of Douglas? Yes, within the town of Douglas, correct. Um, that was the big uh, DEP comment, I would say. So, and as a matter of fact, this project was kind of spawned from the alternatives analysis for 60, What's your 63, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the address. 63 Main Street, because I think we came in front of the commission with a, just a preliminary plan. It would have required a lot of 
riverfront um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alterations. So that's when we looked at this site, which is under common ownership, and it just made more sense to develop this site rather than develop the current site. So, yes. <laughs> so that's one of the comments with DEP. And then I believe the other comments were um, submitting the traffic analysis, which we did. I believe you have that. Yep. And then there was another, oh, the, uh, the signed and stamped stormwater checklist. I don't know how that, that passed us, but it will be included. We're revising the stormwater report based on the peer review comments. So it'll be very minor tweaks, but one of those tweaks will be a stamped and signed stormwater checklist. All right. Who flagged the brook? Did you, brook? did you, yeah, did you freshly flag it? How, I mean, how close is that 200? Has it been freshly flagged? I believe it was based on GIS. If what? I'm not mistaken. Can, you can't um, do that. Scott. Scott. Do you <laughs> Good evening. This is Scott Jordan from Ecotech. Hi. Good evening. Hi there. Just yeah, asking. Yep, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I heard the question. We did not flag the brook. Um, it is located on private property, and it's not uncommon for us to, um, for off site perennial streams and rivers where we don't have permission to access to um for engineers to utilize um aerial a combination of either aerial photography or to or uh, topo maps um to uh extrapolate where the brook is and, and pull a riverfront off of that it's it's quite common actually um, so that's what happened in this case um in fact i do believe though that ecotech did flag that brook at some point, I think it was 2014. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if uh, Rob, if, if if your boundary there is pulled off of those oh, really? old flags, or if you guys extrapolated that. Yeah. Uh, Actually, that remind. So off-site wetlands are based on there was the 2014 Banesh plans for the site, mm -hmm. which was previously submitted. Mm -hmm. So that. Thank you, Scott. That is correct. We that's how these off-site uh, resource areas were located based on those plans. Yeah, I was here in 2014. Okay. So because it's so close, I mean, I would hope that it's not extrapolated. I would hope that that riverfront area is from that 2014 study. Correct. The, Are yeah. you sure? Absolutely. Is it say a note on there? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, Believe. And I mean, she's getting her no parking sign, so I'm sure she would consent to, you know, hanging one flag to make sure that you're not. I mean, how much between the right of way and the property line, like, or the property line to the, within the property? You're I can't really see it. Yeah. How many feet is that? That's about. It's about 15 feet, maybe 20 feet. By what? Oh, you're talking about the width? Yeah. That What's the width? The width is 20, it's 28, 38 feet. Sorry, no, 40. That's 570. 30, 38 feet. That's 570 square feet. Wait, which one? Are we you must have put in this 826, right, on your application, your NOI? Correct. So Wait, you've how got wide is it? disturbance, it's 38 by 15. Oh. You're so yeah, it depends where you draw the property. Total line. permanent disturbance is probably like 570 ish. Which. Uh, it's going to be an exercise to go through to meet the requirements for riverfront area. That's why, that's the only reason why I'm asking. I don't know where the 826 came from unless there's um, curbing and... Well, there, there's it's curbing, permanent but I don't disturbance. know if there's going to be yeah, 100 feet of curbing. Yeah, that would be pulled off of our CAD software to scale where we would just, we would take... Did you do the area that is within the riverfront area or did you do just the we did proposed... The permanent disturbance. Permanent disturbance. You're referring to... 
They've got 826 resource area altered for riverfront areas, 826. I mean, if you included, if you measured here to here, mm -hmm. to here to here, and included this area, yeah, the, I could see you getting that. The total area of riverfront area, it says 2,057 square feet. And then we have proposed alteration right, so the grading. Six square feet. What was your last one number? 826. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean it's just <laughs> worth a look no, because I mean, you're... Can, we can double check that. So those were the sticking points, so that still hasn't been remedied, right? So nope. the the alternative analysis and the um, stormwater checklist is what you owe. Correct. We're going to, we're submitting a whole new submission to both Conservation Commission and Planning Board. A revised submission? Revised. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it'll be on Wednesday. I didn't okay. want to submit anything before this public hearing since I didn't want to just send new material. Yep. Yeah. No, that was, that was good. No, thank you. Um, okay. So, board. Do we have a handle on the activity within the jurisdictional areas of our our board, our commission, which is very small? Eric, all set. Art, all set. Yep. Mike G. Yeah, familiar with Mark. Mark. Uh, just tell me what's happening in the southwestern corner of the site that is that an infiltration area correct this and is that's an within a buffer zone correct that is an infiltration basin so is that an excavation to create that infiltration basin yeah there will be a slight excavation there so bottom of the basin i believe is 496 and i think grade is about between 499 and 500 so, get this to work. Yes. So yeah, there will be an excavation in this area. Do you know what the groundwater elevation is in that area? Yes, we did um, soil testing both for Board of Health feet. and where our stormwater uh, basins are going to be. So groundwater was about nine feet deep, beautiful sandy material. We pulled out a rock. Besides that, it was like beach sand. The lucky rock. Yes, the lucky <laughs> rock. But it was very nice material. Nine feet from the existing grade or nine <laughs> feet from the proposed grade? Nine feet from the existing grade. So we have three feet and four feet about separation in both the basins. I think this one is three feet separation, this one is four feet, which would require, so we have the mounding analysis that we included mm -hmm. as well. So. And there's two of them, and the, and the one on the, they both take water from the parking, driveway. And roof. And roof. Correct. Yep. So all the impervious area will be going to these two basins, which are both infiltration basins. And so how do you keep oils and stuff out of that area, or can you? Correct. Yeah, so catch basins are going to be hooded in deep sump, so they'll have some oil storage. but. We're also including offline oil grit separators. One's a 3,000 gallon, the other one is 4,000 gallons, which are sized per DEP regulations. And actually they're a little bit oversized just to be safe. Um, and what those will do, those will collect any oil that isn't collected from the um, uh, catch basins and before going into the infiltration basins. And one other item to note, we wanted to make sure that none of our infiltration uh, system, anything was subsurface. Part of the reason is if there is an oil spill, let's say something does get past an oil grit separator, you're able to detect it immediately. If it goes to an underground dry well, you'll never know. So um, that was another reason for the infiltration basins. And so how is that finished or planted? What's, uh, what's going to be put in the bottom of that? So these are all just going to be grass slopes, three to one, with a grass bottom. And then the uh, perimeter around will be landscaped with shrubs. Uh, there's a few trees that we have in our landscape plan. Um, I can pull that up, actually. The basin itself, where we would just do uh, some type of grass mix. 
unless there's something else you prefer, like a meadow mix or something. But I think we're going to want anything but monocultures. Okay. Duly noted. <laughs> and nothing invasive. Yeah, that we don't want that. I noted you have a proposed irrigation well. Correct. That's I just, so I'm curious, within the jurisdictional area, how much of this area is planned to be grassed? So I know you're going to have a, a bit of cement here with the tanks and the infiltrations and, the, and what have you. How much of this slope are you just planning on, on just kind of seeding to stabilize? Um, are you referring to just area within the jurisdictional? Yep. 100 buck for? Yep. Okay. So I'm in the upper right corner in the vicinity of the irrigation well. Um, I'm, a, I could be, I'm assuming there's some grading there. Yeah, we have, there's one little spot here that's going to be graded, and we're just showing that as a riprap treatment. Okay. In the corner of the um, under, above ground storage tanks, which, correct, these will be on a concrete pad. Yep. Everything else in this, in the 100 foot uh, wetlands buffer, that's all going to just be grass, uh, in, you know, impervious, I mean, impervious surface. Um, we're not, I believe. But uh, so, are you grading in the area? Is that area disturbed? No. This, the only portion that we're going to be cutting out into this hill is this portion here. Which is that corner? Is okay. That corner. So the rest of it, like, I just have an aversion to the word grass. Uh, it's just whatever was there before. You're not disturbing it. Correct. Let me okay. Double check the grade. I'm just making sure if you're coming in and grading in your seating that I don't want to see, like, a, a, I don't want to see a large lawn. Yeah. So this well, is one of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. The on our grading plan, the only thing we're grading is this area um, within the 100 foot buffer zone. This will be really just at grade, so there really will be yep. minor disturbances. Um, and there really shouldn't be much disturbances here with the irrigation well is. So okay. it should stay that kind of... Can you just find out exactly what areas we're talking about? We're talking about this okay. jurisdictional area. Okay. All right. That, but over here? No, we're not. Uh, That's non-jurisdictional. I can have my green lawn here. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say anything about it. But I, I have no problem back there keeping it au natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a pretty significant slope in the back portion that we really did not want to touch. As a no, matter. and it would, yeah. Yeah. That actually looks great like it is. It does. It gives right. a very nice yeah. natural buffer. And that's actually part of the reason why we had to cite the ASTs in this location. Mm -hmm. We were thinking about putting them on this side to keep them out of the 100 foot buffer. But then you have to dig this whole corner up. And there's a chance that there's going to be a retaining wall, which with the ASTs, there's uh, separation distances. They really wouldn't be feasible. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the best place for them to keep them further in the back of the site to keep out of public view. Okay. Try to hide them as best we can with some vegetation around. And I'm, I mean, I'm somewhat familiar with the site. I know not a lot of it's forest. I just, when we're, when we're talking about vegetation in the vicinity of a wetlands, it's important to maintain as much of the root structure of the existing plants that are there that's very hard to replace. So, Absolutely. I would say, you know, it's all on the back of the lot, mm -hmm. and, and to the degree we don't touch it, it mm -hmm. would be my goal also. Yep. I think it's absolutely stunning the way it is, and will disturb only what we need to right. for construction, and so yeah, I completely agree. It's, okay. the, it's the open on the side, out of your jurisdiction, I guess, mm -hmm. that I'm picturing uh, probably having a large grass area. Okay. Yeah. It's flat, there's nothing there, and just snow piles when I plow. And something else to note, too, I probably should mention, something that's unique about the wetlands is it's up gradient, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the hill, which is yep. a little unique. We had that double check, too, because it didn't make any sense, but it, it's absolutely there. No, it's a weird area. Yeah, and that's, it's mostly, it seems to be collecting runoff from where the transfer station is, yeah, which, 
and we modeled our HydroCAD model to have that off-site area because we've had a few sites recently where, you know, we well, we usually account for the off-site drainage, but there's been flooding that we weren't aware of until we started working on the project. We don't want that issue here, which it doesn't seem like that will be an issue. But regardless, that's why mm -hmm. we have the HydroCAD model, which includes this area of great. Okay. Thank you. No, I appreciate that clarification. Oh, no problem. Um, I have one question that might be out of scope. You can tell me if it's out of okay. scope. What was the plan for the existing gas station? Is this going to replace it, or are you going to run both of them? No, that property will be decommissioned. Okay. Everything comes out, dispensers, all the underground pipes, the tanks. Uh, it is contaminated as we speak. We had a 140-gallon spill two years ago tomorrow. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. And um, uh, so it'll be decommissioned, it'll be cleaned, and our, our environmental company says, hey, best time to clean is we pull the tanks, mm -hmm. remove any okay. contaminated soil. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then the property will be put up for sale. I have two interested parties, uh, a restaurant and a pot shop. I think I like the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's so, the economy we have here. Okay. Well, we need one more. <laughs> <coughs> so okay, okay, so board members, we have a limited amount of land jurisdictional. Mm -hmm. I think we've answered another question. So does anybody have any questions or comments regarding this hearing of 74 Main Street? I'm seeing none. I'll entertain a motion to continue to February 7th at 7 p.m. So moved. Motion made by Art. Second. Said by Mike G. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Art Bobman, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Mark Mungi, aye. KD Dudley, aye. Okay, so we need those two elements. Revised plans. They will all be submitted. February 7th. Yeah, Approval. That should give you plenty of time to review. That should give you plenty of time. <laughs> that should give you plenty of time. I mean, you can, is that date good? Let's yeah, sure. what I'm saying is we're submitting. Well, the March 7th would be the next one, well, so. That's why I want to. Yeah, I want to make sure. He's got to start working on the changes tonight before he no, goes to bed. The changes are already done. Okay. We, we were going to submit them, but like I said, since this was technically the us opening the this, first I didn't one, yeah. Okay, All no right. problem. So it will be submitted Wednesday. I hope that'll give the commission enough time to review. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. Okay. No. Okay. That's a promise, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. If I, if I may, just one other yes. thing. Yes. Um, our last meeting, we filed late, and again, I want to apologize to the commissioner for wasting your time. That's okay. And and just to be very clear, I have an email from Steve warning us about the five day. It was absolutely falls on us. That's okay. So two weeks, I like that. It went by so fast. I know. Sure, sure did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah, You're thank welcome. You very much, thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Are you going to take the statue with you? Yes, we oh. are. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Did you want to see where, where it's going? <laughs> on the plan? Oh, is it on the plan? I missed it. It is well, on the plan. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of in the same spot, just reversed. If you want to show again. Katie Grace. Mm -hmm. Do you, it's, uh, I don't have it on this. Do you, sure. Just on the, the three lane entrance to the right, right in the curve yeah. there. Oh, not nice. in the riverfront area. Oh, not in the <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, why do you have this <laughs> this ice cream cone lady when the not the two hundred? Actually it looks like half of it might be in the riverfront area. <laughs> Oh, that was like that's part of the, the eight twenty six. Yep, it is. It's oh. totally in the riverfront area. <laughs> do you want us to move it? No, no, I do not. That's my opinion. <laughs> I'm not worried about the runoff from the ice cream person. <laughs> lady. I'm um, lady. I think it's a lady. I was yeah. informed by Roland, the man who commissioned it, that he had it built as a man. Oh, and that wow. I converted it to You a did? I painted it. <laughs> Oh, it has I eyelashes. Of, eyelashes are the signature of femininity. Yes. <laughs> oh, I that's how you know what gender something is. I need to is. see it's the old eyelashes. picture of it. 
The colors. The old, old picture. Yep, I have one. It's, okay. Mas it's mascara. Oh. <laughs> so I've also heard it referred to as an androgynous ice cream person. Oh, okay. So that's why I refer that's to it as the ice cream, cream person. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, yeah, politically Susan correct. Pinhead did two cartoons, Ooh. national Ooh. cartoons. I've seen them. And we have the original artwork in the store of one of them. But uh, awesome. the other one they called it in androgynous. Is ice cream person. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. It's obviously a woman. No. It's no, a, we're not. The t shirt we don't says know. lady. We don't you know. Look at it. Oh, you yeah, don't know for sure. Lady. That's what the store is. The named store says ice cream lady. Yeah, so it kind of. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda is public hearing notice of intent White and Reservoir Dam Operation and Maintenance Manual, White and Reservoir Watershed District. So open this up. Um, you have a hefty fisheries and wildlife letter in yeah. your packet. So they have also requested a continuance to the next hearing date. And um, finish reviewing their plan. It was it is very hefty. Hopefully things will get ironed out by our next um, February 7th meeting. So I'll entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to February 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m. So moved. Made by Katie Gray, seconded by Mark. All those in favor? Mark Harris, aye. Mark the aye. Mike Grucko, aye. Mark Munjum, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Steve? Yes. Hi. Could you please email them the deadline for submittal of new information? Who? <laughs> um, Lauren Gluck at PAR. Okay. She is requesting is there if there is a deadline for response to comments. So I would like, I um, mean, I thought we were working yeah. on having a deadline submittal date before next meetings. I don't know if we have that. Yeah, we, or if we need to make that a policy. Well, why, don't we dis, why don't we discuss that? So what would, I try to get everything at least a week before I cut it off because I have to send, submit the agenda unless it's something that's dry. So let's just go with one what week you, before. Like? One week One before. week before. So if, if, so one week before every meeting, the Monday be well, really, well, it comes in that Friday or Saturday. So that Monday, a week before, nothing else has to go on to the next agenda. I mean, that's a light line. Because you're making the agenda 48 hours prior, so you could possibly revise the agenda on Wednesday to add things. But as far as existing projects, yeah, I think one week okay. would be yeah, reasonable. This letter, this letter came from the state on Friday. No, oh, I mean, it's really, it's quite hefty. Yeah, January 21st, 2022, it came in. Yeah. Three days ago, minus the, minus the weekend. One day ago, less than one day. Okay. All right, so if you could reach out to Lauren and let her know that we would like them one week in advance. Okay. Thank you. So new business, request for certificate of compliance for Conservation Drive, the road only, that's in your packet. Um, Steve, do you have any issues with this? Well, I think the road, I mean, it was 20 years. It was the, town, the town accepted the roadway about four or five years ago. Um, the order commissions from the 90s. Um, yeah, no work's going to be done further than what the um, order had said. Um, the only issue is attach a written com a written statement by such a professional certifying substantial compliance with the plans and describing what deviation, if any, exists from the plan. So who is the professional certifying substantial compliance? Why? Well, there isn't one. I think, uh, is there, in his cover letter, does he get over why there isn't one? And they the said that it was 1996 and the original engineer since Can't be found. he retired and moved away, unable to locate him. There is a, I think the town, the town did have a layout plan done by the previous town engineer. It's in your package too. Which was approved at the time meeting. Okay. So 
to board any objection to issuing the certificate of compliance for conservation drive the roadway only sounds like it's just clean up for something that should have happened a long time ago yeah I don't know if there was a legal issue. Technically, it should have been done prior to town meeting vote. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's expired anyway, and it's seasoned. I move to issue the certificate of compliance. Motion made by Art. Second. Second by Mike G. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Art Bobbini, aye. Mike Darko, aye. Mark Mungie, aye. Gigi Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. So, so real quick, so the five orders the orders to sign, this would be four out of the five. The fifth one, if we just pulled in front of Mark, uh, 148 Shore Road, not so people don't sign it. All the other ones. Yeah, Mark, could you just pull that one out or put it aside? Yeah. So that people don't sign. Okay, thank you. Um. So next item on our agenda is public hearing notice of intent 280 U Street, new single family dwelling, Evan Tatro, possible votes. So I am not seeing the notice or any information. I gave you three notices. Um, I put them right on top of your folder. Yeah, two of them were for 120 Gilboa. You had three of them. Yep, and one of them was for 74 Main. So you printed 20, 120 Gilboa twice. I can just pull it up on my phone. Hang on. Do you want me to print it out for you real quick? Um, we'll see who can go faster. Do we have a folder out here for this and a plan? The plan is on the desk. Everyone should have a copy of the plan in your small one in your folder, the large one's in your desk. I wasn't able to get out there because of the snow. Um, I got it. You're faster. <laughs> 280 U Street, Douglas Town of Douglas Conservation Commission. 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass. Legal notice for public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws 131, Section 40, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. The Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on January 24th, 2022 at 7 p.m. for an NOI filed by Evan Tatro located at 280 U Street for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed work involves construction of a single family house and appurtenances. The proposed driveway is within the 100 foot buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Town of Douglas Municipal Center located at 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass, or pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 18, the public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. A website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted on the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the NOI may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission, 508-476-4000, extension 205. Okay, who is presenting for this project? Uh, I am, for the record, Margaret, civil site engineering. Okay. We're representing Evan Tatro uh, for a proposed uh, work, uh, family house. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a uh, proposing a, a 12 foot wide driveway, about 500 feet long. And where the proposed driveway is right now, there's an existing cart road that does go up into this, this lot in the back. So I, I tried to stay within the, the same confines of that existing cart road pretty much. And there are two uh, two wetlands right here, and the cart road kind of goes right through it. And in the summertime, this is uh, pretty dry, but uh, right now and during the, the fall rains, it, uh, you get this wetland that flows <coughs> over it, uh, to the other one. So what we're 
thing is to, to raise the driveway a little, put a couple of uh, culverts uh, underneath. I think I have 12, yeah, two 12 inch culverts and just a small little retaining wall so I don't have to grade down into the wetlands. And so as you can see, here's the uh, 50 foot buffer zone, the 100 foot buffer zone, and the proposed house and septic is uh, are outside the, uh, the jurisdictional areas. Okay, so the existing conditions, are you creating a crossing or is there um, the existing cart road has the elevation to split that BVW? There, there's an existing cart road there now. It has been there for quite a while. So during the during the summertime, um, yeah, the, there, there's there's no flow across these this this wetland here. It's just during uh, uh, big storm events. Um, so that the need for a culvert there. So at this moment, you've defined two VBW uh, BVWs. Yeah. That's what I'm okay, so it's not a crossing. So we've got, and there's no BVW where the roadway is. So we're not doing any fill. Correct. Okay. Right. Margaret, we don't have a D. Uh, we don't have a number yet, do we? Uh, a D E P number. So a while ago. No. Green cards came in today. I checked from the road there. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Um, Steve, anything else on this? I said I haven't checked the road there. I mean, it, everything. It's really just a driveway and the culvert, but I haven't really had a chance to go out there and look at it. So, board, do we understand what's happening? So, um, there's no fill. There's an existing roadway. So I'm going to avoid asking questions about no. the non-jurisdictional area. Yes, thank but you. But I am. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I don't know how are they put in the house in the forest. Um, <laughs> there's a well house out here. There's a well house out here. Oh, cool. Is it? Is it just? Is that just already there? You're just marking it. No, yeah. they're, they're there's a, a, an old uh, structure out there. It almost looks like one of those buildings that's kind of built into the, the hillside. Uh, then there's, uh, I'm not quite sure if there's a well in there or not. I can't remember. I, I know Evan's uh, actually uh, uh, online too. Maybe he can describe what that is. Yeah, sure. So this is Evan Tatro. Um, yeah, so as, as Margaret had described there, this is an existing structure that's um, built into the hill, kind of lined into the hill with stone. Um, there's nothing in it. Um, you know, my, my grandfather had basically put a roof on it, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he called it his man cave. He went out there to the thing. And that's pretty much all it is, just, just a little bit of a structure. So, yeah, that's fine. You're not changing it. No. Great. Thank you. Board, any other questions? I mean, there's an existing car path. We're not filling. Is there an existing pipe or culvert uh, between the wetlands where the cart road goes through? No, not at this time. And you're going to have two 12-inch culverts. Correct. Yep. Because... During uh, storm events, the water is flowing over the car path, right? And it's now. it's hydrologically connected, feeding the, the other feeding the other um, BBW. So that Correct. she's raising that up. Yep. No, I think that's well shown. I just yeah. It's funny with these cart path situations. We right. Have a lot of these that come up. You know, driveway like, only. Yeah, driveway mm -hmm. only. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, we've approved so many in the past with culverts. But, I mean, I would really love to see us get towards not having culverts, but having some kind of a more open structure, something, a uh, three-sided box culvert or something well, that allows 
critters to move back and forth between the two different wetlands and not have this structure with this retaining wall and pipes that keep them from potentially moving back and forth. So well, for stream crossings we do the We open do box. open boxes every oh, time right. we do a stream crossing. Yeah. Right. This right. is not a stream, this is know, kind of like an makes, odd yeah. It's just that it's already split. Yeah. And so the, the creatures are moving from one BVW to the other one over the cart path right now. So they would be moving over the driveway if there's anybody moving. Is the driveway, is the new driveway pa paved or is it gravel? Paved. Okay. Asphalt. And then it dries out, so I'm not sure the benefit of having the open box because it's not flowing. There's no intermittent stream. There's no perennial stream. There's no there's flow no, one way or the other. Yeah. It's just seeping because it's hydrically connected. Hydrologically. Hydrologically. Yeah. Why can't I just say hydrically? Um, is it because it's a hydrological, ecological thing, or is that where I'm we not get the sure. logic part? I'll have to look that up. Are we okay? Hydric versus hydrological. Not sure. Okay, but great. Yeah, I, yeah. Your thought process is good. It's just. Um, the existing conditions out there, which I think if anybody wants to go view the cart path, they go kind of see what the situation is. It's probably lower on either side. and Well, just because the cart path has been there so long. If the cart path had never been there, we'd they be would having probably a different be connected. conversation. Yeah, they would oh, probably be connected. Yep. Yes. Yes, and it would be a fill and a replication. Of it. Yes. Yep. You're right. So my quick comment would be, is there enough, because you're not using reinforced concrete for the pipe structures and you're using the plastic, is there enough cover between the top of the pipe? I try to have a foot cover over that uh, H, uh, that high density yeah. pipe. Yeah. And then what kind, of, what kind of retaining walls are along the sides there? Just a, a little stone retaining wall. I think it's going to be like a, a wall that it's a, a foot, just so I don't have to grade down into the wetland. Uh, uh, a foot high retaining wall with uh, probably stone they can find right on site. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Um, this is the public hearing. Anyone in the audience have any questions or comments regarding this filing? No. Um, I'll entertain a motion to continue to February 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m. So moved. Motion made by Art. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mark Montmany, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Mark Mongemai. KG Dudley, aye. Okay. Mark, do did you want to tag along with Steve said. at all to go look at the site? I'd like to go see it, sure. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Could you let us know via email when you're planning to go out to the site? When is that snow coming? Saturday. Saturday and into Sunday, I think. I mean, if it's actually snow, that's lovely. <laughs> if it's I know, like it's rain so slush, pretty. it's yeah. going to be gross. I don't mind hiking in the snow, I do mind hiking in the rain. It's going to try early Saturday. To see, I got to check the storms. That's when it's going to be snowing. Yeah. Perfect. Starting Friday night. It's so a romantic. Snow if it snows. It's going to be all well, I guess in the snow. March. So I'm going to take what I can get. What? <laughs> What's what it? was that, Steve? I'm going March romantic on I mean, whatever. I'm single. I'm going to get what Oh, you want to you want to continue it to March seventh? Well, if, if it snows, you're gonna have to wait. Congratulations. Okay. Ladies on. I don't know that. Paying attention. Oh, no, Pretty sad. So which are we? Well, you gotta wait. I'm upset that I can't oh, get right. my extra right now, though. Yeah, yeah you we'd have to amend that. My extra remove out right now, though. Yeah. Uh, did you hear all that? Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. what did he say? Mm -hmm. Right, he's Probably talking about Saturday making morning. it March 7th instead of February 7th because with the snow, he might not get a chance to go out to the site. No, I think that's too late. I think for just a two culvert, as long as we have the DEP number. I think just go Saturday morning, as long as it's not like so many inches. Steve? 
Yeah, I mean, I can, I, I can certainly do that. Pending the snow, I mean, well, just policy, yeah, no slight warrants for during snow. Well, I would communicate via email, and I would try to get out there by the. the I mean, I'll try to get out. I'll try to go out pending this week before it gets dark and take videos of the, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And then, um, uh, Evan, are you still with us? Jim. Evan. I'm here. Hi. I'm here. Yep. Um, can the commission go on the property? Is it well defined with that cart path? Are you? Uh, is anybody there? Or I can I can meet you out there. It would be easier that way. I can show you the access. Anybody well, can. can we go the, do we, I mean, do we have permission to go on our own? You can go on your own. Sure. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if you'd like me to be there, I can be there. Well, if you guys end up going like on Friday or something, let me know. Yeah, that's a possibility for me. Yeah. Set this Saturday, I'm not sure about. Um, I mean, it's not a huge deal. I'm not going to be upset if I can't make it, but so if I can, I will. The Saturday before the next meeting. Yep. Does that work for everyone? It does. They're just concerned about the weather. Yeah, for this Saturday. Oh, the Saturday before. There's another Saturday? Oh, there is. Yeah, the 29th. Five. That's no, this that's Saturday. The 5th. The fifth. What about Saturday the fifth, Steve? Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do a time or? Fifteenth. Can you coordinate fifth. a time? March fifth. The site walk on March fifth. February fifth. I'm sorry, February fifth. No, it's okay. Yeah. They're all whimsy. <clears throat> did, did you guys come up with a time? No, that's what we're working on. Oh. Steve. Anytime you want. All right. Mark? Uh, whatever. Like 10 o'clock? 8 o'clock? Eight no, that's too early. Nine. 8's too early. 9 then. Nine. Okay, 9 ish? 10 o'clock. 10 ish? 10 o'clock. You guys like 10. Ten okay, no, let's do 10 then. Between 9.45 and 10. How's that sound, Evan? On the February 5th. 5th. Steve, can you send out a, re send out a reminder on the you know, a couple days ahead. I will. Thank you. Um, that works for me. February 5th at 10 a.m. What other site do we have to do? Oh, we can, go, we can go hang out on Shore Road later. We can go from there to Shore Road. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Excited. Okay. <laughs> we, we already voted to continue this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. We ready to move on board? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. thank you. Margaret, thank you. I think, don't think anybody else is there. Oh, geez. Look at all the screen. I'm just kidding. Next item on the agenda oh, is the RDA public meeting request for determination of applicability 120 Gilboa Street installing a 200 foot square foot gravel parking area. Town of Douglas Conservation Commission, 29 Depot Street, Douglas, mm -hmm. Mass. Legal notice for public meeting. Request for determination of applicability. The Town of Douglas Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting for 120 Gilboa Street on January 24th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Municipal Senate, 29 Depot Street for work to be done pursuant to the Town of Douglas Wetland Bylaw and the Wetland Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40. The proposed request for determination of applicability work location is 120 Gilboa Street and the applicant is requesting permission to create a 200 square foot gravel parking area. Public participation will be available by attending the meeting at the Town of Douglas Municipal Center located at 29 Depot Street, Douglas, Mass. or pursuant to Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, the public may participate in this meeting via remote participation. Website for the meeting will be provided on the conservation agenda posted in the town's website at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Copies of the application may be examined electronically by contacting the Conservation Commission, 508-476-4000, extension 205. Okay, <laughs> who is presenting for this project? Dan, this is Andy Leonard from <clears throat> So first of all, excuse me, that's, um, that's a typo. I didn't use a calculator when I did the math, so in actuality, um, 
we would hold it was 100 feet long, but that area is actually um, 16, going to be 1,600 square feet. It's 80 by 20. Oh, geez. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, but right now there are three parallel um, parking spaces there, um, and we're just trying to pick up some more spaces so we don't have to shuttle everybody over every morning. Uh, no, I hear you. Go ahead. Steve, we okay with this um, ad that said 200 square foot gravel parking area? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. It, it, okay. It, it, it's the genre of the proposal okay okay so um we are pulling up on the screen we see the cut in the existing lawn area to pavement you're just going to have gravel that's it yep and um what are you doing with the material coming out it'll uh where thought would be it would just be long we would take it over to find sand Okay. Um, board, any questions on this request? Did, the map doesn't show the resource area. <laughs> There's a resource area right across the street that's not shown on the map. That's why they're jurisdictional. <laughs> it's within probably half of it. Actually, so you've got just the pond, not riverfront area, correct? Correct. <coughs> Steve, did you, uh, because did you get the plan that I said? Because we had the one point I did. Oh, and the I did. They had it on the screen, but everyone has a hard copy. Oh, okay. Probably half I believe, I don't have it. Way 60 me. feet. Um, it's probably that shows the resource area. We're guessing. Are you? It's an RDA. We're determining do they need to file an NOI or will this not negatively impact? Okay. So I, we have some data from the recent ORAD that we um, approved. So if the roadway there is 60 feet, you're probably, you're hardly in our 100 foot is this the jurisdictional dam? yeah then this is the road this is a river now we're repairing and we're sure. parking vehicles in a jurisdictional sure. area are you talking from the um stream below the dam correct yeah um steve i, I had i had to give it out of i was we were focusing no, it's on the, uh, the low front area there's exempt activities so if the idea is, the question is, you know, he's there within the commission's jurisdiction, but the question is, even if, even if he's in the riverfront area, do you think creating this little gravel drive is going to impact the resource areas? So do we have a document showing the jurisdictional areas and where this area is landing within our jurisdiction? I did not provide that. No. So, Steve, do we have the ORAD plan that we just approved? You want to see the ORAD? Yeah. And zooming into this area specifically. by what? It's 20 feet by 80, because he's actually saying it's only 1,600 now. No. Oh. Yeah, that's the correct yeah, they don't show 16, not 2,000. Correct. Right. So he's saying the long dimension is 80. Right. 20 wide. But is that, um, was that determined to be riverfront area right there? It's the other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So redevelopment within um, 200 foot riverfront area reads like what for 
Um, so we have uh, pervious going to gravel. So the roadway. Part of the idea, he's, yeah. not, I mean, it's not, he's not making a determination if he's outside your jurisdiction. So even if he's inside your jurisdiction, mm -hmm. the, the request of, of the, the purpose of the RDA is it's so minor that it doesn't impact. Saying, this, yeah. I'm in your, I'm in your commission jurisdiction. I think what the work I'm doing, I don't really need to file a full field notice of intent. I think the work I'm doing is going to be so minor that it's not going to impact anything. So I'd like relief. I'm just trying to determine if the information that we have here is is good oh. because like I agree with this concept that it's probably no it's probably no impact it's a small area I'm just looking at this because like we don't have a previous plan for this space right the mill's been here before we did plans like that I don't know when this original parking area was put in and when we decided it was okay to park equipment in the riverfront area, I understand at this point we're only expanding it. I think that parking lot I looked up from the historical photo. Okay. I'm, I'm going to guess it was in the late 70s. I can pin that down. No, that that's sounds okay. accurate. That's okay. What we want to know is from that the edge of the river then we're crossing the road. The road's at least 60 feet. Where are we landing? I mean, it can't even be this whole gravel area is yeah. can't be within the riverfront area. So we're just looking for an approximate location from the edge of the bank to your proposed gravel parking area. I think that's a fair question. I could do that easily as if I could get my hand on that plan that was just up. Yep. And then put the property lines and plot all that out. Probably. So, yeah. I mean, I can bring it up with... Thank you. I think that, you know, I'll if... Give it a shot with the GIS. I don't know what you think saying. So what I'll do is I'll draw a circle 200 feet from right about Thank you. Thank you. So oh, so it is the whole thing. Look at that. So it's 200 feet, and I'll do another one for about 100 feet. No, we don't care about that. Yeah, we don't. It, it is insane. Okay. So, um, I would consider this as yep. uh, a ne negative because of the existing conditions where we are in a riverfront area. There is a roadway separating the river and this gravel area which I would have never mind um, so I'll entertain a motion if everybody's all set with questions I mean it's within the 200 across the street just gonna be gravel mm -hmm. still partially pervious mm -hmm. versus the lawn which wasn't giving much it's benefit. The most compacted lawn I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's really from off the Yeah, it's really like, um, yeah, it's really like, um, yeah. This is salted. The saddest Oops. ecosystem I've ever seen. <laughs> Sand and salted lawn area. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to issue a negative. So moved. Motion made by Mark. I'll second. second by Art. All those in favor? Eric Parasite. Oh, Mark Mini, aye. Mark Rick, aye. Mark Longe, aye. Kiji Dudley, aye. Thank you, and I would just add like no stockpiling on site. So haul out and everything as a condition for the. You didn't capitalize the letters. <laughs> oh, no. Did the math wrong? Yes, you're all set. Thank you. Get to it. Make some more parking spots. <laughs> Brush up on that math, that multiplication. It's tricky. With the zero, too many zeros for you. Who's this QA guy? Okay, thank you. Okay, next item is for discussion. 832 Northwest Main Street, request for a plan change, discussion on amending a notice of intent, Timothy O'Hara. Come on over, name and address, please. Right. Timothy O'Hara, currently at 74 East Charlton Road in Spencer. Okay. Right. 
Uh, we had purchased the property at the end of 2020, and the people we purchased it from had a plan already approved. Mm -hmm. um, we were working within that, and luckily, uh, Mr. Zisk happened to stop by the land, and we discussed um, some changes we had to make to the uh, new floor plan, and he recommended we make an amendment to the plan. So I reached out to the original engineer, and he came up with the new site plan you see before you. Okay, what, is, what are the changes from the previously approved? So the previously approved was blue? No. Oh no, pink. pink. pink and is blue is new. Previous. Oh, so the house blue is, is much better. Just moved forward, correct. Okay. It is just, it's, the buffer is over here. Correct. We went off to the right if you're facing the property. So like, 15, 20 feet. the footprint is, looks smaller, but it is now further towards the wetland. Okay, and within the 200 foot riverfront area? Mm -hmm. Well, most of it was in the riverfront area to begin with. This is the 100. So it looks like you've reduced the footprint within the riverfront area. Oh, um, yeah, I see. It. There's also a wetland buffer. Both sides. On both sides. So, right. so I mean, we it's go not. Any further to the left, so that's why the border stayed there. Uh, we just moved it forward and went slightly off. Right, you stayed out of the 50 on one side and you went into the 100 on the other. Correct. Yep. Yeah, we don't like it in the 50, so... Is there one on the back? There's one on the back, too. You are an island. Yeah, I'm pretty... You much are an island. The only spot I can be. Okay, yeah, <laughs> nope, I see that. Okay, so the house is, looks... Hundred. Has, has less than on surface area. Has you, have you contemplated, and I, I haven't even considered whether this is a good idea not or not. Mm-hmm. Now that the house footprint is smaller, could you move the septic closer? I didn't know if that might actually just make your life easier, too. Uh, that was not considered. All I know is that we switched it around to make it as few changes as possible to help with Well, that. the septic line is now like 54.9 feet away from the house. From the house, which so is your a ways. tank. So you still have the tank in the same location. I don't know that it like saves yeah. us anything from a buffer zone perspective, but it was just... I'm sure the testing was done there too, and the tank it is was. in the same spot. Right. So it it was always in that spot, anyway. Oh, okay. Because the, the field, tank is here and yes. it's coming out to here, so it was, yeah. oh, that's okay. Okay, you're it's just making the least possible changes. Yeah, it's the force well, main. Right. So just a reminder: the purpose is the, is to determine if the this is a minor plan change. change. Is a amended plan, or you want to see a whole new NOI? He's one way or another, he needs to um, have file a, uh, a public meeting. What? Yeah. So, so this is a plan change. So he's coming before the board to see if it's a, the plan change is significant enough where the commission wants a whole new notice of intent, or he can amend the original order of conditions. Right. Why don't we just consider this as a minor modification to the approved plan, if there's no increase in impacts? There's a based 240 on, square foot net displayed area increase. That we were, we request that people would have to file the proper. Um, there is I haven't no decided how to feel about that yet. Or just a minor plan change. The minor plan change would be if you'd have to file an amended notice of intent. I thought we could clerically do okay. that if we clerically do it if we had a revised plan and we've done it in the past as long as it doesn't create any new disturbance or further I don't know why we can't have this as a administrative it, plan change it technically is a 200 2040 square foot net disturbed area increase within the 100 foot buffer it says that in this note. Yeah, I see that spot, okay. but I don't know. So, why yeah, that it's, is. it's are we I, okay with that? So, well, Steve's saying we we don't even need to be okay. Oh, like we're trying to tell him if he has to file a whole new no, and NOI I, I, or if we have to file a whole new NOI, which is an amended no, NOI. Either, either, either you amend the plan with the, you know, with the amendment process, which is, you know, public hearing and, you know, five others, and you just come in with the, uh, this plan and the commission officially approves it through the amended NOI process. Mm -hmm. or, or if it's significant enough, the commission says, you know, it's not a minor plan change, file a whole new 
was consent. That's the whole purpose of this process. Right. And I think the amendment is first sufficient. Similar we did for sure. Uh, right. Same process we did for the. You think we can get away with less? Yeah. yeah. I think it's an amendment. Yeah. 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 I think it's an amendment of NOI. Based right. On what Steve just said. I think it's the first thing Steve said. I don't think we can go less, and I wouldn't go more. I also want to know the reason we're disturbing more is just to get the is to just to get the grading on that end of the house. Correct. Okay. And has that already been cleared? So. I've been clearing the land for the past year, and that's when I met Steve. Uh, again, I so bought the, the property project is and didn't realize anything. I'm just the landowner. I didn't right. know anything about it. So Steve had showed up and explained to me that I needed to put this in. So since then, nothing's been done. Okay. I've so just been cutting down trees. If there's been some work done on the property, why wouldn't this just be as builted as a different house design if there's no encroachment of the existing resource areas because there is encroachment there is additional encroachment i don't get how so i don't see Actually, the original plan and i don't understand how the original the plan footprint the of the here. old house yeah, so that is within the tan area at the top mm -hmm. is, is new yes Okay. That wasn't there prior, and then that green area in the back was the back border, and we shrunk that down. Okay. All right. Board, any other questions? As this is a discussion, I, I think I understand Steve's point. Which way do we want to go here? It's not. Yeah, so, but my position would be you can continue the activity under the original order. That would be my position. You mean for site work? I yeah. To put in the driveway and yeah. I, I, it's work. a valid permit right now. Mm -hmm. You're amending it eventually, but in it's it's valid, right, Steve? Well, um, mm -hmm. yeah, he wanted to change. He came... When I met him, he didn't know the process of filing a bond for the replication area, which hasn't been done, and doing that first, and and doing the uh, the crossing, and getting into the site. Yeah. And then that turned into him looking at the plans, and eventually he wanted to amend the house. He he, he just thought on the fly he was just going to change it. I said, well, when you come in for your certificate of compliance years from now, it's not going to look like what was approved, yeah, and you're going to be in trouble. So you just can't do that. Well, and I so, yeah. And well, that's where we're at. And then okay. based on recent histories with people coming in and these minor uh -huh. plan changes with the DEP regulations, technically. And we did this for Shore Road, and we did it for U Street. If you want to change the plan, you have to amend it. Or, but before you get to that spot, the person comes in, the applicant comes in, and if it's really a lot of changes, the commission can say, "I want to hold the notice of intent." The original order is not even close. Or you can say, "Yeah, this is close enough where we can amend the original order." He doesn't get a new three-year clock. He still has to do this within the original time right. frame. And so this means just to say. It's close enough where we can amend it, which I agree. I, yeah, no, I, if this came in as an as-build, I'd lose my hat. <laughs> I That's why else. I was telling him, uh, I forget when I met him really? last oh, summer. Oh, you know, I, I usually drive I around town, that expression I drive around town looking at these <laughs> sites, and these pop up because inadvertently, he, he, he didn't know the process. He was a homeowner. If he knew it, you know, he stopped right away. And I, I'm, I've been working with him through the process, and... I haven't heard from him in four months or six months. Wow. And he just kind of MIA. You know, yeah, well, I requested an updated plans from the engineer four months ago. Yeah. I got him about three weeks ago. So my position is you have an active order of conditions, DEP number. Mm -hmm. You plan to amend that. But anything that is not changing, such as drilling the well and getting Steve the bond and filling and replicating, that is all not being changed okay, so, so kind of you can proceed okay. no you need to file you need to get your well in, your well in and your you know quantity 
submitted, you're not going to get a building permit until that gets done anyway. Okay. So by the time you do all that stuff, we should be, you should be able to get on to the next meeting, which is February 7th. Okay. But you shouldn't stop. There's no reason to stop. Okay. Everything that Unless was previously approved, okay. yeah. <laughs> right, no grading, but everything like whole that driveway. replication area, yeah, the okay. roadway, the replication, you know. I don't you know if it makes a difference. It's a modular house, so there won't be site work for too long other than okay. just setting the house. Yeah, but yeah. you get the driveway and the well and stuff. Yeah, and so. we're just trying to figure out a delivery date for the house to be delivered. They talked about the end of March, but I didn't know when to give them an actual... Do you have the road in? No, so the site work has been waiting for me to yeah, no, come to this meeting. Well, Steve, we should really tell them, like, you can proceed with your activities that you're not editing. No, I, never, I, I, you know, I never told him to stop it. No, that was I was working with him last summer, and he wanted to change his plan, and so I gave him advice on that, and then they just never, they just never came back. Okay, all right. So um, your engineer will know to file for the amendment, okay. amending the existing order <laughs> conditions. And other than that, everything that you're not changing, the order is still active. So I would get the well in because nothing's getting touched with that well. So, and that's the tough part with these long driveways. Uh, Did you create the access into the site? No, it was yeah. already there. So I just cleared everything behind that. Cool. Yeah, so you have your erosion controls in? Yes. And Steve inspected them? So they were put in and then this was changed. So they're going to have to re put in new ones around the, the new border. For this okay. area. So they were originally put in with the old border and that's when I first met Steve and realized we were going to have to change it. And you have a DEP number on site? Yes. And is. you have the plan and the original order on site? Not on site. Though. Okay, that has to be on site. That's a requirement. Okay. So in case somebody's driving by from here, okay. they can look at the plan. And then how do you guys usually store that on a site? Just put it in? In a permit box. Permit box. Yes. Okay. I'll figure that <laughs> out. Yeah. Google it <laughs> for sure box. All right. Typically with the DEP sign. That's cool. more important than the plan. Yeah, Steve had mentioned the DEP sign, so I put it up the next day after. Oh, okay. It, so. All right. Yeah, so you can still proceed with activity here. I don't want you to stop. Okay. But, um, yeah, so you'll need to, they can easily file it, but they need to electronically submit it to DEP so DEP can get it Understood. in a timely manner so that we can get you. Um, He's going to stick with the same DEP number? Well, if he amends it, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's they'll what we're hook that, yeah, they'll hook those plans to the existing DEP number. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's a simple process. He has the plan. Right. It's really just uh -huh. getting the paperwork straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Good luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for waiting. Not a problem. Okay. We're going to hold off on meeting minutes. Anyone have anything else? Just get assigned uh, the rest of the Sign everything. Say, it's um, only 9.21. We can perfect. assign more activities. No. <laughs> we're not doing anything more. So, Steve, the notices yes. that are going in the paper, there is an error. There's a, some typos in there. There is? When I'm reading, it makes me laugh. So, <laughs> well, you're, you're somebody say somebody, somebody is, somebody. Right now. Been like that for eight months. You're just telling you me that. No, I told you I I laugh when I read it, but it throws me off a little bit. It must have been a naughty word. <laughs> I'm just saying, so like, can we just check this? So send them to me and I'll fix it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so I'm gonna uh, move, move, move to adjourn. Motion made by Art. Second. Second by Mike G. All those in favor? Harris, aye. Art Montmany, aye. Mark Greco, aye. Mark Mundy, aye. Hitty Dudley, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.